this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. I am sitting outside a church here in Beaverton, Oregon, but I want to take some time and show you some footage that I filmed this morning from my permaculture garden in Portland. Now, it's almost November. It's going to be Halloween here in a couple days, which is my second kid's birthday. She'll be 17. But that doesn't mean that there is not a significant harvest still coming out of my garden every week. We've had great success with our little farm stand. I'm basically just putting out quince, but that doesn't mean that the quince is the end of the season. I have many more fruits that are coming ripe over the next few weeks. So I thought I would take some time here and show you around my garden and what are the very late fruits that I have in my orchard that you can grow in your food forest, in your orchard, in your garden. Um, remember, I am in zone 8B here, so the uh, climate that you're in may require a little tweaking. It may be an earlier or a later harvest and you may need to adapt varieties. But let me take a few moments here and show you around some of those very, very late fruits that I'm still harvesting in November. I love to plan my garden. I think it's so important for all of us if we're thinking about food security and uh, producing as much as we can to think about not only a diversity of crops, but how we schedule the harvests across the year. I wanna make sure that I have fruit for my family, not only in May, June, July, August, but I also have fruit all the way into November and that I'm harvesting fruit that keeps very well that I can pick in November, like storage apples and some of my pears that I've picked in September that will store so we can have fresh fruit into the winter. I think that that's really, really important if we want to have resilient design, that we think not only about what kinds of food we like to enjoy eating, but also that we break our harvest up across the year so we have a continual supply of fresh fruits and veggies in our garden. So let me show you around my food forest and what is coming ripe here over the next few weeks throughout November. So here we have one of my quince. It still has quite a bit of fruit on it. Now quince ripen over a long period of time. You can pick them when they still have some green and they will continue to ripen on the counter. But you also could just leave them on the tree. They have such a beautiful aroma. This whole tree is perfumed right now. You can smell it from several feet away. You can see that it will continue to ripen fruit even as the leaves are beginning to turn yellow in autumn. You can see it's still quite green. I've been picking tons and tons and tons of fruit off of this. As they begin to get a little bit yellow, I go ahead and harvest them. But again, if you need to harvest it all in one swath, the green ones will ripen on the counter. So we're looking at uh, being just up against Halloween, almost the beginning of November, and this tree is still putting out a tremendous amount of nutritious, aromatic, beautiful fruit. Another late autumn fruit that's still producing in abundance is rose hips. Now, depending on where you live, if you have a very rainy autumn, you may find that your rose hips don't hold up until the frost. I know some folks really want to wait and pick them after the first frost. Uh, the belief is they get sweeter then, but it's really rainy here and I find that my rose hips tend to rot before then. So I go ahead and pick them as soon as they're nice and reddish orange and mature. Check out my video on my new sister channel, Parker's Hausfrau, where I have been making rose hip syrup. Unfortunately, I have just come through and picked all of the ones that are ripe, but another great late 
crop of berries in the garden is the fall gold raspberry, which if it's mild enough in your climate will produce into mid-November. You can see here, this is not quite ripe. There's quite a lot of ones that are still green and will continue to ripen. I've noticed that the bees have been visiting these frequently and I've been picking enough every day to have on my granola. down in this back corner of my garden and this is the late fall fruit I get most excited about. You can see the leaves are just beginning to turn. I don't want to pick these yet until the whole tree has turned vibrant red, dropped all of its leaves. We've gotten a good first frost. This is the Fu Yu persimmon. I have posted in the past about how I stuck this tree back here in the back corner because I was hoping as part of my permaculture design it would draw the eye back to this corner. This vibrant red fall foliage, tons of these beautiful orange globes hanging from the tree. What I've found is that it gets kind of lost back here and so I really regret having uh, hidden it back in the corner. But this will be ready soon, not yet. It's still too early. Early Fuyu is a non-astringent persimmon and you can eat it when it is hard like an apple or soft. Now I have had some bird damage on the ones that are way up at the top, but you can see here I have just an obscene quantity on this tree right now. Trying to get in here under the tangle of branches without bumping any of the fruit. The only, only problem I have found with this tree is bird damage. Now it did take seven years to start fruiting and then I find it fruits very heavily every other year. You can see how pale this one is versus this one is closer to being ripe because it's more uh, exposed to the sun. It's much more of a reddish orange versus this kind of pale yellowish orange. So just wanna keep an eye on it. I don't mind if I lose a few to the birds. That's okay with me. It happens. Such a great fall crop. Very quickly, very late fall apples are another option. Uh, all kinds of varieties. I will list a few that I really like down in the description for super late fall apples. Again, I bagged my apples to help protect them from uh, coddling moth, which has done a really good job. This one's not quite, yeah, there we go. We'll take that one too. Come down and pick these today. So here, heavily bent over by all of the fruit is Sisyphus jujuba, another great late crop. The problem I have found here in the Pacific Northwest, we have gotten really, really heavy rain right as the jujubes are starting to ripen and they have split. So that's a big problem. I won't be able to dry these well because they have splits in their skin and the mold is getting in. But I do have quite a few more immature ones down here that have not split. So that's just something to be aware of if you grow these in the Pacific Northwest. I'm going to lose a significant chunk of these because of the heavy, heavy rainfall we have had recently. Which is just such a shame. Can't control Mother Nature. Maybe I should have come down and picked a little bit of these earlier. Now, some of these I will still be able to eat. You can enjoy them when they are partially brown and partially green, or let them turn all the way brown and dehydrate them. So the last tree I wanna talk about here is this diminutive beauty. This is my medlar, Mespolis germanica. This is a breeded giant medlar. You can see how large the medlars get on her. If my camera will behave in focus. They get quite large and have quite a big crop. Don't worry if you get kind of this splitting and scarring. It's just, uh, you know, cosmetic. The fruit is still just as good. 
you can see they definitely resemble a, oh, my camera's having a hard time today. You can see they definitely resemble a rose hip in their shape. These will be out in our farm stands soon. They need to blet to eat them, which much like persimmons is a process where, astringent persimmons, is a process where you store them and let them soften. Right now they're rock hard and they would be very astringent and not good to eat, but we wanna let them soften over a period of a few weeks on the counter. And then they're kind of pudding-like in their texture. I find they remind me of a tamarind quite a lot. Very, very good if you take the softened pulp and whip it with whipped cream. So that's the medlar, an ancient, ancient food. Not widely grown in the American garden, but a really beautiful tree. Now let's not forget the last late autumn fruit, which is actually an annual. This is Physalis peruviana, sometimes called the Cape gooseberry or Inca berry. It is related to tomatillos and tomatoes. It is a nightshade and it produces these little papery husks and inside these beautiful yellow fruits. Delicious, they taste a lot like pineapple. I put a few in my husband's lunch every day because they are his favorite fruit. Now you don't want to eat these when they're underripe. They can cause a little bit of GI upset if you eat a bunch of green ones, just like if you ate some underripe apples. Always good to eat fruit when they're at their peak of ripeness. These make great jam, by the way. Great little annual. Physalis peruviana will continue to flower and fruit all the way until the first killing frost. It is frost tender. Now, I have found that if you let any of these uh, fruit go uneaten and they fall on the ground, this can almost become a self-sowing functional perennial because it will come back year after year. I do like to give it a leg up and start it myself so that it is blooming. Here you can see a bloom. A little bit earlier and I get a little bit earlier and bigger crop but it's such a carefree plant. You can see it doesn't need staking at all. Beautiful velvety soft leaves. Such a lovely, lovely plant and produces a ton of fruit that you can't buy in the store. Fruit are ripe when the papery husk turns from green to kind of a brittle beige and often the fruit will fall off the vine onto the ground. And luckily, the nice little papery husk stays closed and keeps the fruit really, really clean. And they will keep their texture for a long time after they hit the ground. So you can come out a week after they've fallen and pick them all up off the ground and take off the papery husks and the fruit inside will still be perfectly good. Just a really, really delicious snack. So thanks for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and click subscribe. Also be sure to check out my new channel, Parker's Housefrau, where I upload every Friday with information and thoughts about ecological homemaking. Thanks.